Yeah, I, there's so many really great things that was, were said that I feel like I can respond to. Like, what are the stories we want to tell? My response to that was, well, what are the stories that are being told, especially within the kind of collective context that we all are sort of um, subject to um, online and everywhere, everywhere else. Um, also, the idea of calling oneself a photographer or not, I've recently just decided that I am enthusiastically committing to <laughs> Um, the, the definition of, um, well, just you know, identifying with being a photographer, like I am a photographer. Um, anyway, I just put these ads, these are two ads that I found, um, and they're, they say a lot, I think, about different aspects of, um, or different attitudes towards photography. Um, but one of the things that I'm constantly thinking about is the difference between collective versus individual relationship to being an image producer and even to the world. And um, so let's see, what do I do here? So I'm going to just show two bodies of work. One of them is um, a body of work that maybe some of you know. But a lot of times I find that people don't actually really understand what that work is about. So I'm going to talk about it a little bit. And then I'm going to talk about that in relation to another body of work that not very many people do know. And then also in terms of just showing who I am, then I might just flip through a million pictures like really quickly and not say anything about them. So you have a broader sense of what. Um, and this is mainly because I couldn't figure out how to get the Prezi presentation that I wanted to show you guys working on this. So um, OK. In 2006, um, I'm just going to have to. <laughs> OK. In 2006, I wanted to know what was the most, subject, most, most photographed subject in the world. And it was kind of a research project. And um, so I went to Flickr, which is a very different thing now than it was in 2006. In 2006, it was um, you know, grandmothers and parents and people from all over the world just putting their photographs there, sort of the way people use Instagram now. And so I looked on Flickr, and um, I searched a ton of different subjects. And the most photographed subject then, in 2006, was sunset. And so I started to collect these images of sunsets, because I found it really fascinating that um, you know, we only have one sun, yet there were 554,000 images of the sun online. Um, so I collected them. I didn't know what I would do until like a few months later. I realized that I, it was about the sun, so not about the individual taking the sun. And I was really looking for the most iconic sunset. Um, everybody knows what, the, what an iconic sunset is, right? Like if you are taking a picture of a sunset, you would you have an idea of what that would be like. Um, so I was looking for those and, and ones that had a perfect image of a sun. And then I cropped all the suns from them. Um, I wanted to make a kind of statement about the individual versus the collective practice of taking a photograph of the sunset. Um, I uploaded them all to Flickr. And then I um, also uploaded them to Kodak Gallery, which existed in 2006, which doesn't exist anymore. And I made Kodak Easy, Easy Share prints out of them. They're machine prints. Um, so these are, um, this is the first installation that I did um, of that. This actually is in my studio. And then, um, and then a year later, uh, or two years later, I was asked to make an installation of them at the New York Photo Festival. And um, in between this time and then, I had also made an installation in Australia. And what was really fascinating to me was that from the, the first year to the second year, the numbers went from 54,000 to 2 million. And then between the second year and the third year, uh, to 3 million, to four, and then to 4 million. I started titling my, oops, sorry. I started titling my, um, my installations, so this is the first installation in my studio on this date. And then I started titling the installations with the number and the date. So that it became, oh, I see. There's a touchpad thing here, sorry. It became um, a record and a sort of a register of the number of shared images of sunsets on Flickr. It was, it was around this point. that I realized it's actually not, it seems so sublime to me and then, and so 
you know, like awesome that there could be that many images. And then by the time it got to be about 8 million, then 9 million, it was just like, oh yeah, okay, well, this is just gonna have to go on forever. But um, so um, I'm just gonna quickly go through this and show you this. So this was um, during the New York Photo Festival, I gave a talk and um, after the talk, I found, actually Joachim Schmidt sent me this. Um, from Flickr, there was a, a Flickr discussion board, and it's right, um, how can I do this without making it go forward? This sentence, or this little paragraph here, that this person, they, they hated Joachim Schmidt and me. We both gave a talk one after the other, and they were complaining about us. Um, her claim is that nobody owns the circle of the sun. I think she is being dishonest, at least with herself, and lazy, not even showing the courtesy to ask people if she can use their work. There, I said it although I like the work among the very best in the show. <laughs> so to me, that was like, it was a really, like I, I often learn, we were talking earlier about teaching, like I, I really like, I teach, I've been teaching for a long time, and there's something about like a dialogue between students or a dialogue between my audience or a dialogue between people that I have conversations with that help me, that learn, you know, I learn about my work. And this really taught me a lot about this work, first of all, this idea of ownership and what it meant to own the circle of the sun or what it meant to um, take a photograph of the sunset. And, um, and then the idea of attribution. Like, if I gave everybody attribution in an, in an installation like this, let's see if I can find a, a better one, um, this. Um, I would not be able to make this work, right? But also, it would, it would not only, because I have like 2,500 files of sons, um, but it would also defeat the whole point of the work. The whole point of the work is that everybody is taking the same kind of photograph. It, when you go and take a photograph of a sunset, you don't want to take a photograph that you haven't seen before. You want to take, the, you want to take this kind of iconic sunset. I do, you know, most of the, so, um, and that's what these were about. And also, if you could recognize your son in here, then fine, I'll take it out. But like, the idea, so, you know, there was this kind of dialogue around, I mean, I wasn't having a dialogue with them, but my response to that was to go on to stock, stock sites and um, find, um, find th so these are large images with narratives, like these are all the tags, like couple in love, enjoying beach with woman embracing man, young man with eyes closed at, and sunset in background, beautiful young woman running on the beach at sunset, real shot background, senior couple toasting champagne and looking into one another's eyes against golden sunset. So that's what, so I'm making a big crop from, from those larger images, but I, I really like the idea that the stock company was, um, was actually copywriting, putting their water mic right over the sun. So that's what these are. Um, and. Then I found um, this on Flickr, actually. Somebody found this piece and was angry, taken from Penelope and Brico's portfolio, which, by the way, I don't, I don't like portfolios. <laughs> um, copyrighted sons inverted right-click save as points to a blatant disregard for creative copyright in screen-grabbing legally protected images and using them in a new work without proper licensing. So, I mean, he, he or she doesn't get what I'm doing, but what was really fascinating to me about this is, um, like, Big Stock is one of the, the companies, the, one of the stock sites, and right around the same time that I found this, I also found this, which is from Big Stock, and it's a, a grid of solar eclipses, and the bottom sentence there, our collage above, made from Big Stock's own collection, is an homage to artist Penelope <laughs> Ambrico's amazing sun's image. So I felt vindicated, and <laughs> um, anyway, the other thing that I found really fascinating, so it's to, to talk to the idea that although I love the work the very best in the show, was um, this was an experience I had when I installed this in China. I noticed all these people photographing themselves in front of my work, and this is the first time I'd actually experienced this because I happened to be there. Um, but I realized that these are all digital cameras and I should be able to find these photographs. Um, I, I totally loved that they were touching. Like there was something about touching the sun that I, I found really, really touching. <laughs> um, so I looked for it online. I found this on Flickr. 
Um, so someone had been to the show in Brisbane, this was in Brisbane, and it, I found a documentation of it, and then I started to find images all over the place. So this is in um, San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. And I love this photograph because um, notice the two guys taking, the one guy taking a picture. This is someone taking a picture of my work in the general area. Um, I think this was Stephen Rhodes' photo stream. But then I found all these, so, so the two on the top, the first one is the guy who was taking the picture in the last one. And then the second one is the picture that he was taking, but anyway. So I started to find this kind of thing, which actually led to another project, oh well, I also find lots of pictures of my work online, so this is a, someone else's documentation of my work. I, I framed them and put them up at, um, in a show in, at Mass Mocha, actually. Um, and then people in front of those. This was, I'm gonna skip over this because we're running late, but um, it started, it led to another project. And actually I wanna say something about photo editors and magazine photo editors, that I had started to make work like this and I, I was really responding to these, these images when um, Kathy Ryan at the New York Times Magazine asked me to do a project for their magazine called Ghost in the Machine. And that's when I actually fully realized this piece, which is um, all the images. So instead of just taking the sun, I'm actually taking all those images where the technology of the camera is exposing for the sun and not the person. And um, I really like that the technology is actually working against the idea of the individual's presence. So in this work, um, for me, this became the stronger project in a sense because all of these people, all uh, us as individuals, when we stand in front of a sunset and have our photographs taken, it's like we're asserting a kind of presence. It's like we're insisting on being here. You know, we're sharing that with all our friends. I was here, but, but in fact, the technology in this case is actually erasing us. Um, so in the context of all of the people who are doing that, individuals are disappearing. And um, I think that this work is really interesting in relation to this other work that I'm also doing, which is TVs from Craigslist. So these are photographs that I'm finding on Craigslist of people selling their TVs. <laughs> Where, you know, so in, in these pictures, people actually claim authorship. They're, they're taking the photograph as a, as a photographer and wanting to feel present in the world, and yet they're kind of disappearing. In these pieces, or in these images, these are purely utilitarian images, and nobody is even really aware of the fact that their reflection is in them, because right now you're seeing this blown up to five feet by five feet, but the image on Craigslist is about, you know, um, an, a, a half of an inch by a half of an inch, or an inch by an inch, or what, what what is that in centimeters, <laughs> sorry. Um, so you're not necessarily aware of your reflection. Um, yeah, so I, I really like these. And so what I did with these was um, the ones that I found with the most interesting <laughs> reflections in them. I just, <laughs> this one I love. I love the, the arms holding the other guy. <laughs> So I, I cropped all of those out, and um, I, I print them on metallic um, glossy paper and face mount them to Plexi so that they, they actually look like screens. Um, and I've also, so that's an installation. But I've been finding these really, um, what's really fascinating to me also about this project in relation to the one with the, the sunset portraits is that as camera technology is getting um, better, the sunset portraits are harder to find because technology can read the face. And, the, and so now the cameras are exposing for the face. But as um, cameras get better also, I'm seeing way more details. Uh, this is another aspect of this project where I, well, I'm not gonna go into that, but. So here's um, what I was finding at first, just flashes. I was taking the flash because the flash, um, the flash indicated the presence of the seller. Um, but these are in 2008 that I was making them, and then um, by 2010 and 11, I was finding a lot more detail. And I also was starting to find naked people. Because I've been doing this for like, you know, since 2008. Can you guys see the naked person there? Um, I, well, I can, 
there's like definitely something here. <laughs> um, and this is just baffling to me, like completely baffling. So this is in the reflection of a television. Um, so this is like, you know, I, when I go onto Craigslist and look in a city, because I, I travel around America through Craigslist looking into people's living rooms and bedrooms, right? Because they're selling their TVs, they're putting their TVs for sale, and they're taking these pictures from the vantage point of their bedroom or their living room. So they're basically inviting me into their private spaces. Um, and um, so I'm, I, I'm in a city and I have to look at all the TVs because if I don't do it all at once, you know, new ones will show up. I don't know what I'll be missing. It's a, it's a five or six hour endeavor once I start. Um, and so having done this for many years, I do find images like this and like this. And I feel like it's a little bit like um, blow up, Antonioni's, Antonioni's blow up, except that instead of being in a public space, it's in the bedrooms of America. And I've done it on Gumtree also. This one's really great, because this is like, I love the bed, it's like so beautiful. And that's like, that's my favorite. <laughs> but this one, I just, I love that, uh, you know, when I try to use this mouse pad to point something out, it's okay, the bed, but then the, this person is holding a laptop or an iPad, a really big iPad or something. Um, and then this, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's an unclothed butt. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's the... Um, I'm going to end there because, well, I'm going to just quickly now go through all the other work really, really quickly. I'm not going to say anything about it, but um, I just want to give, you know, in the... In the, um, in the vein of telling you who I am. <laughs> That's in Switzerland, by the way. Rossignier, the Alt Plus 1000 Festival. These are um, images of masters mountains taken with um, millions of iPhone camera app filters and a web piece. Okay, that's it.